Hello friends, the Mexica were an incredibly advanced society, but the religion and cosmovision is immensely layered and complex. So in this brief lecture, we introduce Mexica philosophy, religion, and worldview. We also introduce the most important deities and talk about which deities are related. Because in many ways, the Aztec gods are really a family history. This is a family history. And although blood offerings are integral to their worldview, the very mention of Aztec sacrifice is usually incorrect, extremely misleading, and distracts from a better understanding of the Mexica. So we're not going to do it. So we'll learn about the Mexica worldview without offerings. And if you want blood offerings, you can literally go anywhere. You can go to kids' books. And you can find this anywhere. We won't do it here. So to better understand who the Mashika were, let's read an axiom recited to newborn babies. And now what? This type of dicho is called Weiwei Tlatoli. And it reads, You were sent here on earth. Thou came not to rejoice. Thou came not to be content. Thou came that thy bones, thy body should endure pain, suffer affliction, and thou will work like a slave. You will labor, and you will suffer weariness here on earth. For this reason, you were sent. Damn! Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, little one! What does this teach you about the Aztecs? The Mexica are serious people, and although they freaking love their kids, and they call them precious jade. These ancient Mexicans passionately believe in hard work, devout service to the state, and service to the God, to the dozens of patron supreme beings that they have. Complete order and a sense of duty for everything in their lives. And a strong family unit is also crucial. And the punishments for not following these orders were severe. So here is an Aztec father punishing his child by forcing his 11-year-old son to inhale chili pepper smoke. Now strict law and order was also set for females. Again, the Mexica are some serious people. By the way, although the Mexica had strict rules and punishments, they don't punish kids until they're at least eight years old. Okay, now, the Mexica religion is also heavily invested in concepts like duality, duality. like husband and wife, male and f- female, like near. And far and dual natural cycles like day and night like drought and rain life and death and rebirth is crucial in the worldview or the idea of death and life and afterlife just like you see here, the snake must shed their skin several times a year or it will die. It must be reborn. You must be reborn. There are about 700 species of snakes in Mexico, so it's the perfect metaphor for the Aztec worldview of rebirth, reincarnation. Regeneration is crucial to the Mexica. Rebirth, duality, and natural cycles are abundant in Mesoamerica. And the metaphors are clear. And the Mexica are also animistic, which means they believe all things are connected spiritually. That animals, nature, and humans each have a spiritual essence. Now perhaps even more important is their relationship with the natural environment. And as you can see, the natural environment in Mexico is beautiful. 
but incredibly dangerous. Even just a quick look shows grasshopper plagues, floods, snows, famine, hailstorm, droughts, droughts, lots of droughts, lots of famine, and earthquakes. Lots of devastating earthquakes in ancient Mexico, specifically ancient Mexico City. There's lots of death by natural events in Mexico. And thanks to Frances Burden in the left corner doing her presentation at LAGMA. Life is uncertain in the Aztec world, but death is certain and it can happen and it will happen, partly because of their harsh environment. So as we begin this last part of this lecture, let's talk about the Aztec deities. Now, the Mexica are clearly polytheist. Although arguably there are only a few principal gods. There are officially 144 deities with Nahuatl names, according to Manuel Aguilar Moreno. Of these, 66% can be classified as masculine, just like my ex. And the remaining 34% as feminine. But there are a few caveats. For example, Tlalacutli, that you see here, is a deity that can be male or female. And here's the female version, as Earth Lord, Destroyer, and Creator. But it's crucial to remember that their version of a god is probably much different than your god or gods. Your god might be very far away in a place like heaven or someone that you really can't see and they might be omnipotent or all powerful but not the Aztec gods. Mexica deities can have natural and spiritual powers and forms like flora or fauna and you can clearly see the fauna here at the snakes. Mexica gods also have natural and celestial resources i.e. the term heaven and earth is something that you might be familiar with. So, as the gods can have the same essence as ancient people, as ancient Mexicans. They can also have dual or multiple purposes. And many gods can have many, many different types of purposes. Which is why even the word God isn't a good fit. Because they're not the same god or gods as yours. The term supreme beings or demigods work better. Remember, Aztec deities are extraordinary beings that could do superior things, according to David Carrasco. Okay, it's also worth noting that in Mesoamerica, each town had their own patron god. And it's a tradition that still exists today, where every major city, let's say in Latin America, generally has a patron saint, or a patron virgen to look after them. Okay, now, what's also very telling about the Aztec worldview is the sunstone, which you know as the Aztec calendar stone. Now, I have a lot of other sources to explain this, so we won't go into any great details, but the sunstone is not a calendar. The stone tells the story of four previous ages, how they lived and how they were destroyed, and the creation of the fifth sun or the fifth age. The stone weighs about 24 and a half tons, and we're not even sure if it's supposed to be shown upright or laying down, although it's probably meant to be laid down. But what's most telling for this lecture is how the, how the stone is named and decorated. Now looking from the top left above the central figure, let's go a counterclockwise. And we go one, son of Jaguar, two, son of wind, three, son of fire, and four, son of water. Now these parts of the stones are named after the force that destroyed them, not what gave life to them. And that's very telling about the Mexica. Each era or sun was destroyed by jaguar, wind, sun of fire, and water. 
And to the Aztecs, the force that destroyed them was more important than the force that gave life to it. Four times. Death and rebirth are crucial in the ancient Mexica world. Okay, this is our last section. And it's about the Mexica Pantheon. And it'll be quick, but you can learn a lot. So let's start with Omateo. Omateo is a dual divinity or lord of duality, the Aztec creator god that was both male and female. And from Omateo, four sons were born as the four directions, the four cardinal points. The black Tezcalapoca, is god, Tezcalapoca, or smoking mirror. The white Tezcalapoca is Quetzalcoatl. He was the duel of Tezcalapoca. The blue Tezcalapoca was Huitzilopochtli, the god of sun and war. And the red Tezcalapoca was the god Xipitotec, the god of vegetation and renewal of nature. Now there are many important Aztec supreme beings, but, there, but these are the most important. Let's go over a few and kind of fast. Remember, this is just an introduction. So we've covered Omateo and the four brothers. So now on the top left, Kualikwe, the mother of the gods, with her son, Huichliopochli, who, who fought off his sister, Kolshoke. Now, bottom left to right, Tlalakutli, the earth lord, Tlalak, the god of rain, Xochipilli, the prince of flowers, god of dance and music, Miklantakutli, the god of dead, Tonatiu, the sun god, Sentio, the maiz god, and Shipitotec, the flayed one, the god of spring and regeneration, and there are many, many more that you have to learn on your own. And how do we know their importance? Because we can look at the most important structure in the Aztec world, where the fifth cardinal point, Cuatopec, Snake Mountain, also known as the Templo Mayor, the main temple. To the Aztec, this is the Axis Mundi, the literal center of the universe. This is where you find all these deities and the most important building. This is the setting for the birth of Huichli Apochli from his mother Kualikwe when she feared her daughter Koyoshoke. Again, this is a family history. Mother, son, sister, but there's no dad. It's like Toy Story, there's no dad here. And there's also Aztec demigods that are married. Ah, get cute. But if you're thinking that they look miserable, remember they are married, so. Yay, we're gonna wrap up this lecture. Thank you for listening. Here are a few great sources for future learning, uh, including something that I wrote. You can see it on the bottom left hand corner. It's called Nearly Everything You Were Taught About Aztec Sacrifice is Wrong. Please find this great article on Mexico lore. And let's end with one more quote, which is very, very telling. And I'm gonna go ahead and straight reading. This is what Aztec life really was. Life was seen as a ephemeral moment, and Earth as a place where suffering, metaphorically expressed as fatigue or physical pain, was the norm. Man was destined to feel hunger and thirst. Their proper attitude was forbearance, stoicism, and the faithful performance of one's work and duty. And that is the Aztecs in a nutshell. Thanks again for listening and for watching and i hope that you have a blessed day